RBDFM FM and that is casting crowns uh, with their new track All Because of Mercy. What a wonderful song. It's not because of what I've done, but it is because of what Christ did on the cross. So I don't get rewarded according to my performance, but according to His performance. Well, welcome to His Heart once again every Friday between 8 and 10. And this morning, I want to ask you a question. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? So no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, the question remains the same. Is anything too hard for the Lord? You might be fighting a disease in your body. You might be fighting a financial battle. You might be fighting mental health issues and working under tremendous stress and strain. The question is the same. Is anything too hard for the Lord? It is critical for us to understand this. This rhetorical question was asked to Abram when his wife Sarah was laughing at God's declaration. God said to Abram, next year this time you will have a son. Sarah was listening and she laughed and she asked herself a question. Is it possible for an elderly woman like myself to have a child? And God confronted Abram and he said to Abram in Genesis 18, Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she laugh? And in verse 14, he asked this question. He says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Now, what you need to understand about this is here's a woman in a culture where having children is critical. It almost solidifies you and gives you status. You are rejected if you are barren and you don't have children. Until the age of almost 90 years old, she was waiting and expecting for this promise to manifest. And it didn't. It didn't manifest. She didn't have the child that she wanted. So she was just waiting and waiting and waiting. And here all of a sudden, at this appointed time, the promise comes. The promise comes, but it comes almost too late. Now, I don't know in your life if there's things that you've been waiting for and Maybe for the first 10 years or the first 20 years or the first 5 years, you were expectant and you were trusting upon God's word. But when Sarah doubted, like when we doubt, she was not just questioning the Lord's truthfulness. You know, will he do it? Is he talking the truth? No, but she was also doubting his ability. She was saying, I'm too old. It can't happen anymore. It's, it's now impossible Forgetting that God is the creator of the universe. Maybe this question brings us to a perspective where we look at our problem and we don't see the greatness and the bigness of our problem, but we see the largeness and the greatness of our God. And we turn our gaze towards the creator. We get so blind looking at our lives. I mean, you're running around every day in this rat race. And many people are so spiritually blind that they cannot see what's happening. They are just running and they're thinking, you know, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to go there. I need to do this. And they just think, let me work harder. Let me work more. Let me work more intensely. And they think that's going to get the results. But our results in the kingdom comes from this silent confidence of knowing it's not about what happens to me. It's what happens in me. Therefore, now I walk by faith and not by sight. Are you doubting, like Sarah did, God's truthfulness? Saying, is His promises real? I've seen the opposite happen in my life. How can I believe His word? How can I believe His promises when the total opposite is taking place? And yet, if you persist in faith, if you persist in trust, if you persist standing on His Word, you will see the manifestation of His goodness even in the badness. So even in the darkness, the light will come forth. 
Even in the bad thing, the good thing will come forth. Even in the test, the testimony will come forth. Even in the trial, the triumph will come forth. But you need to stand upon His word in spite of what you see. In all circumstances, in every form of attack and situation, in any form of disappointment even when you are disappointed like Sarah was, I've been waiting, God. I've been waiting. It hasn't come. You promised it to Abram. It hasn't happened. We've been waiting more than a decade. It hasn't happened. Now it's too late. I'm too old. Are you doubting His truthfulness? Or are you doubting His faithfulness? Or are you doubting His ability? Remember who God is. You don't know. You can't describe Him. He's undescribable. He is massive. He is the God that created the cosmos, the universe, the planets. Everything is upheld by His Word. He spoke it and it is still sustained by Him. He is a great God. He is an immeasurable God. We cannot measure Him. And yet, He is closer than a brother. He lives within each of us. He knows us so well that even the hairs on our heads are numbered. Is anything too hard for this God? Another instance of this scripture in the Bible is in Jeremiah, where this prophet gets arrested for speaking God's word, for speaking the truth. There are many false prophets, but this prophet proclaims God's word and nobody likes it, so he gets put in prison. But then in Jeremiah 32, the Lord says to the prophet, Babylon is about to take Israel into captivity. A 70 year period is about to start where the nation of Israel will be slaves. As the Babylonians breach the walls and they put their siege rams up, they are going to burn everything in the city. God says those houses where idols were worshipped, those places where my people disappointed me, they are going to get burned and desolate because of what the people did. And then God gives Jeremiah, this prophet, a very strange instruction. And he says to him, Jeremiah, one of your family members is coming to you and he's going to offer you land because everybody's getting rid of their property. Everybody's heard about the Babylonians coming. Property values are declining. Nobody is seeing a future for Israel. This massive empire, Babylon, has swallowed hundreds and hundreds of nations. They are a ferocious force. When they move through a land, they desolate that land. So everybody's getting rid of it. All of a sudden, properties that were worth many, many thousands of, of dollars and rands were worthless because of this threat. And what does God say to this prophet? He says, you go buy that land when he offers it to you. Maybe this family member thought, you know, I need to get rid of this property. The Babylonians are coming. It's going to be worthless. Let me try old Jeremiah, an old relative of mine. Let me see if he's going to fall for my trick. And the Lord says, yes, fall for the trick. Buy the property. Because I want you to demonstrate something. I want you to show something by investing in something that's worthless and nothing currently. Because you are not investing at the word of man. You are not investing at the revelation of circumstances. You are investing in faith knowing that the God that gave you this instruction is the God that is going to fulfill what He said He would do. And the Lord says, it's going to turn around again. So by investing now, you are demonstrating to the people around you that you have no fear for Babylon. It's not Babylon. It's God that allowed Babylon to take Israel captive. It's actually Israel's own fault because they were warned that if they would be unfaithful, if they would move and serve idols, they would be conquered. They would get themselves into a position of submission to the nations around them because of their disobedience to God. That's the real story here. Yeah? But this prophet does what the Lord says. He weighs out the silver. You can read this in Jeremiah 32. He weighs out the silver in front of witnesses. He signs the deeds. 
according to the Lord's instruction, he even takes the deeds and he puts it in a pot uh, so that it can be preserved for years. So that when the pot is broken years later, when God's word is fulfilled, the property deed is intact. And that property actually belongs to his family. And then it's worth a lot because the Babylonians have been taken and removed from power by God. God used those nations to teach Israel a lesson. And in Jeremiah 32, 26, we read, Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? You see, the reason the Lord is saying this to Jeremiah is because Jeremiah has this very elaborate prayer. But in this prayer, he enters in this little question that, Lord, the Babylonians are taking over the country and you instructed me to buy this land. But you're a good God. You're a great God. What Jeremiah was saying is, I don't understand. Why should I buy land when everybody's running for their lives? And the Lord says, because... You are demonstrating your faith in me to those around you. You are saying to those around you that I don't care what happens around me. I care what happens inside of me. I don't care about circumstances and situations. I care about the faith that I have in God. And that faith is unshakable. Sarah was waiting for a promise that never happened. She, she thought maybe God lied. She thought, now God can't do it anymore. Jeremiah was living in a world where everything was falling apart. The last thing on his mind was investing in the future because there was no future according to the physical evidence around him. Yet God said, invest because I have a great future. You are going to get through this triumphantly. There is going to be restoration. Doesn't look like it. Didn't look like that for hundreds of other nations. But is anything too hard for me? That's the question the Lord is asking. And today as you hear that question, you have to answer that for yourself. You have to say to yourself, what I'm facing now, is this too hard for God? Maybe like Sarah, you think God's not faithful. I can promise you of the 31 years, He is faithful. Maybe you think it's impossible. I can promise you after 31 years that nothing is impossible. Just look at me. I should have been dead. I was on drugs from a young age. Most of my friends are dead. I was not supposed to get out of that lifestyle. And even when I came to Christ, when I received Jesus as Lord and Savior, the people around me in the city of George, they were all saying, everybody will come right, but never Richard. Others were saying, Richard is pretending. He's just using this to get out of trouble. He's not being honest. He's a liar. One lady said that Richard lies so badly that he believes himself. Nobody trusted the work, but the work was taking place inside of me. Because He touched me. And the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit began this transformation inside of me. And it's been an ongoing transformation for 31 years. But He has kept me standing. He has kept me free from drugs and addiction. He has kept me in victory. And even in our business for the last 21 years, how many times have we faced insurmountable odds? like Babylon, Assyria, or anything like that. Insurmountable odds, something that you cannot solve, problems that you cannot work past. I said to somebody yesterday who's in the same business as I am, I said my business has been stripped down to the ground, to the point where I'm almost where I started. Myself and Teresa working in the business with one guy and running around and we don't have a vehicle, we don't have this. And uh, the guy who worked for me for 10 years left and a lot of things going on, running around and doing Bible school and trying to focus on what God has called me to do and being distracted and pulled towards other things. But every time I center myself back on faith and I say, listen, 
devil, you cannot steal, kill and destroy in my life. You cannot take what God has created. I said to somebody the other day, they said to me, other businesses are waiting for you to die so they can come and pick your bones when you're dead. When your business is gone, they just want to come like vultures and, and grab the, the meat off your bones. And I say, listen, God started this business. This is God's business. I'm a steward of what God has. My purpose and my calling in life is not to build an IT business, not RT solutions, not a computer business. My calling is to spread and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news to everybody that would hear, whether that be my IT customers, wherever I go, Bergville, or wherever I'm serving, servicing customers, my primary objective is to service them with the light of Jesus Christ. Yes, I need to make money. Yes, I need to pay bills. Yes, I need support from customers. But my source is not my customers. It's not the businesses. My source is not my business skills. My source is the God that created heaven and earth. He's my source. And nothing is too hard for Him. And He is faithful. I have seen this year by year and month by month. He has demonstrated His goodness. I can declare on radio and I can declare on social media publicly that it, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, if it wasn't for the sustaining power of the Holy Spirit, there would be no Heartbeat Christian Academy anymore. There would be no Bible school anymore. There would be no RT Solutions anymore. And there probably wouldn't be a Richard Murphy anymore. Because I am dependent upon Him. There are many days that I don't know what to do. There are many days that I want to sit in a corner like a child and just weep and say, God, just take these burdens from me. But then, like David did at Ziklach, I encourage myself in the Lord and I continue the work that He's called me to do. I see those waiting in the hospitals who need encouragement and prayer. I see those kids waiting at the children's home who need love and attention and role models. I even see those in the prisons incarcerated waiting for somebody to come around and encourage them and tell them, listen, there is a turnaround in your life. There is a breakthrough in your life. There is something in your life that can happen. And then I can emphatically state to everybody I meet, everybody I see, that nothing is impossible for the one who believes. And that is the scripture I want to end off with in Mark chapter 9. I want to encourage you. Nothing. Listen, say nothing. Doesn't matter what it is. Nothing is impossible. Take it to God now. Break down. Fall on your knees. Lie before the Lord. Cry before the Lord. Pray before the Lord. Call upon His name and He will answer you. And invoke the power of heaven into the hell that you are facing right now. Do it right now. Don't allow the devil to steal, kill and destroy. And to keep you captive and a prisoner of your own life. But break out into the purpose. The divine purpose that he has created you for. Listen, it's not your purpose to get married, have children, have a business, have a career. Your purpose is to fulfill the divine destiny that you have been called for. That's the only thing that matters. It's inside of you. It's begging to get out. But it's kept in there by the rules and the standards and the implementations of this world and the system. So let it go today. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. The man asked Jesus, he says to him, if you can, help us please. Again, an indication of a man who is in a situation where his faith has been shipwrecked. He's got unbelief that came into his life. He has this child which is taken for help to many people. Now Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, His disciples at the bottom, they fail to deliver this child. This man has a 
bad life because he has to follow this child around. This demon throws him into water and tries to drown him. The demon throws him into the fire and tries to burn him. And this man is obviously exhausted and his entire life has been fashioned around protecting this child. And he gets to that point where he says, if you can do something, Lord. His prayer is not filled with faith. And Jesus asks him this question. He says, if you can. Is anything too hard for God? Jesus asked him this question, if you can. Are you saying to me, God, if you can? Is anything too hard for God? He doesn't want an answer to this, but he wants you to think about this. To think about your image of God and the way you see the problem. The devil has totally deceived you to a point where you see God as nothing and insignificant in your life. Where is everything? The very breath that you're breathing is God. If you can, Jesus said. And then he says, everything is possible for the one who believes. Now the translation says, anything is possible for the one who believes. So today I want to burn those words into your spirit. Is anything too hard for God? Is anything impossible for God? I want to say to you, everything is possible for the one who believes. In Jesus' name, Amen.